Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to another Amateur Sports TV production of On the Ice. I'm guest host Andrew Greenall, stepping in for Theo while he's away, or I don't really know what he's doing. He's probably relaxing. Anyways, tonight we have special guest. Uh, she's uh, 23 years old, played for the University of Alberta on the Pandas, played with Team Canada at a point throughout her career, and is with us today, uh, Alex Prasnikov is with us today. She is a great young lady. I'm very happy to have her on the show. We're going to talk to her about some of her ups and downs throughout her career and now leading into the Professional Women's Hockey Association and how she is helping them build uh, another route for our young ladies across Canada uh, to participate and the U.S. I guess you can be part of that team if you wish. Um, let's talk to her when we come back. Sit down and let's enjoy this. Alex, good evening. Thanks for joining us on On the Ice. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. And you know what? Thank you so much. I I, uh, I am grateful for any young woman who is available to talk to us about the growing sport of women's hockey. This is, uh, to me, you are the star of the show. Please, you know, um, thank you for, for being available and thank you for taking the time out of your, your studies and your uh, workouts to be with us tonight. Alex? Okay. You're 23 years old. You played five seasons with the University of Alberta Golden Bears. Uh, hi, Howie. Uh, we all love Howie. Great guy, great coach. You've played with some of the best. Megan Nicholson, Haley Wickenheiser. You've played uh, played against some of the best. Haley Wickenheiser, uh, Turnbull. Um, just I want the young girls out there today to know your struggles, your route, the route you took. Um, so let's start at the bottom. You grew up playing boys hockey. Let's talk about that. How was that? How did you get involved with boys hockey? You know, I'm guessing back then there was probably only boys hockey for you to join. So let's talk about that. When did we start? How was it? Go from there. Yeah, well, so I guess my brother played hockey as well as my older brother. So I we were always kind of a hockey family. And uh, I got kind of spoiled with boys hockey because I, I don't know if there was too much for – for women's hockey at my age, but uh, my mom actually coached me throughout all 10 years of boys hockey. So no she way, was, really? Yeah, she was the head coach of all my teams until I switched over in midget to uh, girls hockey. But yeah, so I, I got pretty lucky. She was uh, uh, nice to have around and I learned a lot from her. So she had a lot to do with my development over over that span of my life. So, How was it playing boys hockey being uh, I'm assuming one of the few girls that were on the team at the time. So how was it, um, I guess, not really being segregated, but getting changed in either the broom closet or the janitor's closet. But how, how was that mentally on you at that time? Uh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't find it too bad. I, yeah, I did change in the bathroom or, or whatever, but when you're on the ice, everyone, you just kind of, you felt, felt like you fit in. And so I really enjoyed that. Every team I had was was awesome, and they they um, treated me very nicely. So I can't complain about that. Uh, it it did feel all the the same basically when we were on the ice. So that was that was really nice. And who usually won fights on the ice? You or your mom? <laughs> uh, I'd say my mom. <laughs> uh, wait till she watches this. She'll be like, "My sweet darling." <laughs> yeah. So we played up until midget. Um, why the change? Was it, what, uh, do you think that it was at the right time to go into the women's uh, path or was it just uh, like most parents, they were concerned about the height, the size, the weight of the boys and that you could probably get squished? Yeah, I think it was actually a mix of everything. I, it went in Bantam, we had hitting and Pee Wee and Bantam and I, uh, I had a little bit of a target on my back, I guess you could say, with a ponytail sticking out of my helmet. But um, once I got to Bantam, I, I unfortunately stopped growing at 5'2", and uh, most of the guys kept kept going and got a few uh, hundred pounds on me. <laughs> so I was getting crunched a few too many times, and I think uh, my parents thought it'd be better if I'd change over. But I, I, I really enjoyed boys hockey, and I think I didn't really learn a lot about women's hockey until I midget. Or approaching that age so then 
it felt like more of a an, a good option for me to switch over. Um, the switch. Do you do you think that it was difficult for you uh, going into the girls as typically um, there's no hitting in girls hockey. There's more of the rubbing than the hitting. Um, and you would have grown up at the time during Pee Wee and Bantam. Um, so like the U11, U13 type thing where there was the hitting. Did you find the transition difficult or were you able to convert like right away? I did find it a bit difficult at first because it's a completely different game. I mean, the the women's hockey game is so fast all over the ice and very strategic and very, and very um, I guess you could say it's a lot more technical and mm -hmm. in lack of a better word. And guys hockey, you know, it's everyone's playing a system, but it's not as um, organized, I would say, or it is kind of drilled into you. And that was new to me, that whole system side of, of the game. I, I wasn't really um, – we had never really focused that too much on that growing up. So coming in at midget, it took me a while to nail down our four checks and all that just because it was a little different. But I, I did realize that the game was a lot a very fast and very technical. Mm -hmm. So you had to rely a lot on your skills and just your heads up play still. And it was more physical than I expected it to be as well. So you brought up a few, a few things that I want to hit on. You said that it's um, definitely faster than the boys game. Do you think that the boys game was more skill based? Or do you think the girls game is more skill based, but just faster? Or how would you describe that? It's almost, I felt like the boys game, at least where I had played, it felt a bit more individual opposed. So each, each, each player you're, you're on your team, but it was definitely a lot more individual skills. And, you know, you would, you would try some different things, uh, different moves, but with the women's game, it's very like you're, you're going as one unit and it's, if you, if you're not on the train, then it's it's gone, right? So you really have to pick pick up your socks and learn the learn the system so you could keep up. So let's talk about uh, when you got noticed by uh, the pandas. Um, when did you first uh, start talking to them? How did the talks go? Uh, let our let our viewers know what that process was like for you. Yeah, well, so I had always loved the pandas growing up. Obviously, I'm I'm from Edmonton, so that was that was. We won't hold that against you. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. actually, my mom she went to the U of A, and she was getting she got her master's in coaching, so she was working with the pandas a few years before I I was there, and so I'd always gone to the games when she there she was coaching, and I kind of fell in love with the program, and I met Howie a couple times, just a few chats, and then I think uh, that whole process started. I, I'd kind of did, reached out to Howie. I'd been talking to him from around grade 11, grade 12 or so. It was a little later, but um, he he's uh, big on speed and he doesn't have, doesn't worry too much about the size of players. So I, I figured I would, might fit in there because I'm not the biggest player, but I rely a lot on my speed. So it felt like a good fit to me. So I just kind of kept that communication open with Howie uh, moving in to college basically. So let's talk about, uh, so now we've we've got our invite from Howie, we are on the team. What's training like with, with the U of A? How, um, being the rookie back in what, so it would be like 2015, 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. Um, what was the training like being being the rookie? Um, were you, I miss, like uh, a lot of girls growing up right now are always afraid, you know, I got to be that first liner, I got to be that first liner. But maybe explain to them what it was like for you stepping into a new team, uh, being the rookie, and where you fit into the dynamics of the team. Yeah, I um, well, I usually go into any new team basically from from start to finish. You always go in just you have high expectations for yourselves, but you don't want to you don't want to set your standards too high to, to be disappointed. You know, you always have something to work for, and sometimes it feels like it takes a little longer than you want it to, but you just got to stick to what you know and um you know bottom line is if you're a teammate you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're in the right place and that makes it a lot easier to transition from being a first year to your fifth year but i found a lot of it is leadership groups and, and everything like that like how he does a very good job at creating a strong te team culture so coming in as a first year it's you're basically treated on an equal playing field which is which was amazing did you have those same, uh, same type of uh, things growing up where you were treated as an equal because you were playing on a boys team? Or do you think it became more 
uh, visible as you joined the women's side of the game? Uh, I'd say it was a little bit of a mix. I would say I realized it more in the women's side, but I think maybe that could be too, just because uh, I switched over. When you when you get to the higher levels, it begins to uh, amplify. Everything's amplified a bit more when you're when you get older and into more elite uh, hockey. But no, I I always, I always felt uh, very equal on my teams, which was which was really nice for me. So in your first season, um, not to brag or anything, but you got 16 points. That's amazing. Being um, maybe explain to our viewers where where were you in the lineup? How did you come across? Because uh, I believe you're a forward. So where did you fit into to the plan for the U of uh, U of A? What? You know, yeah. How did you fit in? You got 16 points in your first season. Obviously, coming in as a rookie, I would be impressed as a coach. So how did it go for you? It, uh, you know what, it was actually a funny year because I, I didn't really expect to to play the, all the games or anything. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have those expectations that I wanted to, of course, but uh, mm-hmm. we actually had a lot of injuries that year and we only had three lines for a half the game. So <laughs> I don't know if by default I got lucky and <laughs> got to play, but I actually ended up, I'm a right winger usually, but I played center that whole first year just because we, our lineup was a little bit scattered. So I got, I definitely might've got a little... <laughs> a little more playing time because of that, but uh, I'll take it, I guess. Yeah, and I do notice here in your first uh, first season as well, um, you spent quite some time in the penalty box. Do you want to talk about that, young lady? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the penalty box. <laughs> I can just imagine Howie's face right now, standing on the bench with his uh, with his lineup sheet going like this <laughs> as you headed to the penalty box. <laughs> um, hey, penalties are penalties, right? As long as it was a good penalty, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I tried so, not to make eye contact. <laughs> you're asking why. No, it wasn't me, Howie. So um, going into the first season, what would you say the training was like being the first year? And you just brought up that you didn't expect to be hitting the ice in games. So I typically most college university teams bring in around 23, 24 players around there so what was it like with you um and then getting that call so what was the training like and the expectations because you were low you were like i'm here i'm happy i'm doing my studies i'm on the team but what was it like doing the training with the team it was it was really um it was really good for me i thought i was uh even training beforehand till midget i never did really any like weight training or anything in that sort i was just stayed active and played a lot of different sports, but I started to get into it a bit more midget with my hockey team, just like once a week or whatever. And then when you get to U of A, you, the training is, uh, it's quite extensive. You have skate six days a week, two game with, well, four practices and two games, and then you train two, two times a week as well. Mm-hmm. So you have those days, I was, I'd never been used to it because in midget, we'd have a workout one day and then maybe a skate the next day, but this you'd have skates every day and you'd have double up on workouts. So. I was definitely tired the first couple months trying to adapt to that, but the um, you, you you adapt quickly. <laughs> no kidding. So what was it? Um, uh, what is it that you're studying uh, uh, now that you you've graduated now? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So what were you studying while you were there? Just curious. Yeah. So I was in uh, arts, recreation, sport, and tourism, but I minored with sport management. Ah. So what's in your future? What are, are you going to be one of these new new owners of an NHL team or a WHL team? Or what yeah, are we looking at for you, Alex? I definitely want to pursue a career. Definitely, I have sport management was uh, excited me quite a bit. And so I, mm-hmm. I would definitely like to pursue something in that field. You that's, could that's awesome to hear. So played a few years with uh, on the Pandas. And then... If I recall, there was an injury. Did you want to talk about that briefly with our with our viewers? Yeah. So, you your leg. Yeah, I uh, we just got back. It was our first weekend back from Christmas break this uh, this year. So it was January 2020, and it was the second game against. Uh, we were playing Saskatchewan, and I snapped my leg in the game. So I <laughs> I was hoping it was just a sprain, but uh, no luck with that. <laughs> Typical hockey player. Put some tape on me. Put the spray on my leg. I'm good to go. Exactly. So I ended up getting surgery a week later. 
and then from there on it was pedal to the metal it was my fifth year so i didn't want to i didn't want to spend the whole my whole fifth year sitting on the sidelines i was wa really wanted to get back in so from basically the week of surgery and after that it was just pedal to the metal the whole time we had rehab i, I did upper body for quite a bit because they i had been told that if you at least stay active it might help you um retain in some of that, your um, muscle so mm -hmm. i was trying to do everything i could to not lose too much muscle in my leg and so i'd hobble over to the gym and my trainer would bring all the weights to me <laughs> and so it was cool. it took a full staff i had the physios helping me every day basically and giving me exercises and working on on my foot so the days were a lot longer than when i was actually skating which surprised me <laughs> I'd wake up, work out, go to practice, stick handle, and then go to rehab after practice. So, but we managed to get back skating in in five weeks after surgery, and I uh, I made it back for playoffs. So I was pretty excited about that. Wow, that's so awesome. Um, unlike most uh, uh, most hosts, unfortunately, I don't pay the bills. Somebody has to. We have to take a commercial break. Everyone, we'll be right back. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with a plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue. Welcome back, everyone. We still have Alex here. Alex, thanks again so much for joining us. I'm so happy to have you on the show so all the young girls out there can see that with hard work and dedication, you can make it um, and, and with your dreams. So when you were little, Alex, what was your dream? Where did you want to be? What did you want to do when you grew up? Well, I wanted to be an NHL player, <laughs> obviously, and I wanted to play for the Oilers. So that yeah. was always my, always my goal for a long time. And I trained like I was going to make the NHL one day. <laughs> but as I got older, obviously, and realized kind of where I was at, I, I really wanted to make the, the Canadian Olympic team. So ever uh -huh. since I basically got to watch women's hockey for the first time on TV, I've been just set on making that uh, a reality for me. So uh -huh. kind of what I've been using as my, my motivation. And that did become a reality, did it not? I believe you were on Team Canada's U23 team at one point, or U18 was it? U18, I played a, the series, and then U22 I was on. How was that experience getting to play with some of those, such as yourself, very high caliber young ladies? How was that? How was that experience? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, every it's obviously a little intimidating. You go in with, for the first time, and you don't really know what to expect, but the good news is most people are in the same same boat as you, and everyone's always a little bit nervous. But it's incredible to play beside those players. You get to watch these moves they make on the ice and how they see the ice. It's just it's amazing. They make you better. Everyone's so, such a strong strong player. They're fast. They're skilled. So even practices, you got to be sharp, and so it really raises your your level. Did you have a, a player that you idolized when you were a young lady? Oh yeah, well I always I always loved um, my women's hockey. I feel like Wickenheiser was such a, a driving force in that. So I always I always really appreciated what she has done for the game, mm -hmm. and what she continues to do for the game. And then for the NHL, I, Kelly Buckberger, he was my uh, one of my neighbors, and I I always wanted to be like him. I was number sixteen, so I he was yeah. number sixteen, so that's why I'm number sixteen. Good old Buckberger. He's yeah, I know Bucky. He's a good man. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I believe when you played in your first or second year, you would have played against Miss Wickenheiser. How was that experience? 
So I you actually missed that? Missed yeah, no, you did. You would have played, right? I know. I missed her by a year, I want to say. Okay. Yeah. So you never got you never got smucked into the boards by Wick. <laughs> no. Well, that's that's a bummer. You never got initiated. <laughs> <laughs> There was that, that little rivalry between the UFC and the U of A throughout the years, and it was always a clash of the titans. And Wick was the uh, the enforcer on the team. I don't know if you know that, but she was. <laughs> yeah, I went to. I actually watched a few of those games in uh, Claire Drake Arena. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. So now we've uh, you've gone on. You played uh, with Team Canada. Was that your goal? Was that where you wanted to go, or did you want to keep going? Oh, I want to keep going, and I, I mean, I still want, I want one day to, to play in the Olympics, so I'm still, still want to keep going on that goal because that's something I've been looking forward to for a long time, so hoping if all goes well, if I work hard enough, maybe it'll, maybe it'll happen, but, and so, yeah. And then I think some really exciting news for you would have come out um, just this year when you were announced on the roster for the Professional Women's Players Association team. Um, those teams, there's three of them, three, right? Across Canada yeah. or four? Across Canada, yeah. Yeah, so how was that news? How was how did that phone call go? Oh, it, it was exciting, obviously, because I mean, now after university, we're just starting to develop, to develop more systems and areas for girls to continue hockey, right? So. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's so important to support leagues like this because I felt like I was just hitting my stride in my fifth year of hockey. So I would have would have been sad if we didn't have anywhere else to play. But um, no, that was it was incredible. I, that, I had my eye on that team for a little while now, and so going to tryouts is a bit nerve wracking because the it's not exactly a easy roster to make because they their players they're amazing. Everyone mm -hmm. on the team is so incredible. So I was just fortunate enough to get to practice and play with them and it went well enough that they decided to keep me around, but. <laughs> they just decided to keep me on the roster and give me a Jersey and a spot. <laughs> um, so now you're playing with some high caliber players that have played where you want to go to the Olympics. Um, who are you looking at now and trying to idolize to help get you there? Or who are you talking to on the team? Cause you have the, the um, uh, Nicholson, you have, um, uh, Turnbull, well, there's a few that are on the Calgary team. So who are you looking to now and who are you talking to and getting advice from to make it to Team Canada? Yeah, well, it's a little bit of everyone. I mean, a lot of those, there's quite a few uh, Canadian national players on that team. So I, I just, in practice, you're always asking them little, little tidbits and they're always, they work you hard in practice and they'll let you know if you did a good job. And so really they're all just their leadership skills are incredible so you don't really have to reach out they they tend to kind of find you and give you some help if you need it and so it's that whole that whole roster is amazing so I've been pretty lucky yeah how many times have you guys been on the ice since because I know down well here uh in Alberta well pretty much across the country there is no hockey at the moment mm -hmm. but how many times have you guys been able to actually get on the ice and do any training so, well, uh, the past couple of weeks we haven't been because everything's been shut down. But before that, we were a couple times, two to three times a week for a little bit. And then we were able to play like an exhibition game against one cohort, which was nice. So we played like three games. But uh, right now we're at a bit of a stalemate. So <laughs> just waiting. Yeah. For we got to pause here quickly for another commercial break. When we come back, we're going to ask Alex some of the tough questions that everyone wants to know.
Welcome back to On the Ice. We have Alex with us still. Alex, thanks again for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. So some of the tough questions we got here. Um, who is the best player on the ice currently on the professional women's hockey? Oh, geez. That's a tough one. Oh, well, come on. You got to give us an answer. This is our <laughs> reporter. Come on now. I know. I know. Okay. Who's the... Who's the oh, and, and when you see Johnson, tell her to pick it up a little bit, okay? <laughs> Just say, tell her Andrew said, pick it up a little bit. <laughs> I might leave that one to you to say. <laughs> um, so we're on the ice every so often. Obviously, we've we've been off the ice. Have you been doing any personal training yourself right now to keep to keep it going while you've been waiting to, to get that call to head back to Winsport? Yeah, oh, definitely. I've been, every day I'm training, I'm, I am fortunate to have a, a little workout cage, so I don't have to go to the public gyms right now. So, But I usually train four to five times a week. Nice. Um, the other question some of our viewers would like to know is, what is your favorite pregame meal? This might be uh, – <laughs> my favorite pregame meal is actually crepes. Really? Yes, with some a little bit of syrup on them. <laughs> oh. um, another viewer texted in. Uh, they wanted to know what your <laughs> what your skate size is. What my skate size is? I think it's a four and a half. Four and a half. And they would also like to know what brand of stick you use and why. I use Bauer Vapor. Uh, mm -hmm. cause they've uh, I really like where their kick point is, and I, they're nice and light, and I just like how it feels. So I've always been a, a big fan of Bauer. Mm. That was no plug for Blauer. Uh, we were just asking her a question. But if Bauer would like to sponsor the show, please <laughs> yeah. contact us, uh, and we'll be happy to sign you. Um, sponsors. <laughs> hey, well, we got to pay for the show somehow. So um, after this, uh, have you been involved with any of the meetings with uh, the PWHPA and how their plan is to move uh, forward and create more of an avenue for young ladies after college and university, have you been in any talks with that? Oh, definitely. And I mean, they vote, they're they always in constant communication with us because ultimately what we have now is something that they're kind of aiming to make it so we can have a sustainable career as a hockey player. And mm -hmm. um, so that's why they're always, always talking to us, always updating us of how they want to move forward and how they want to progress. So it's uh, very good for keeping us in the loops. And Are you able to share any of that information with us? like where their visions are, how they're hoping to grow the women's game back to where we have like a team in every province. Are you able to share any of that? Yeah, well, we don't have any of like those fine details, but they, they do want it basically. Like if we could make it like the NHL, we would, but I think a big one we're going off is the WNBA. They've just done such an incredible job with that league and, and getting it so, so players can make, make a living doing what they love. And so I think that's kind of where the PW is hoping to progress to. Well, that's, that's good news. I, I think that uh, definitely with young ladies such as yourself that have the, the ability to continue playing and are, and are able to continue playing, it gives you guys an avenue to, to look forward to because pretty much like most of the time when you guys are done college or university or go right into a job or you get married and you're like Nicholson, have two kids <laughs> running around <laughs> and you're still trying to play hockey. I commend that woman. I tell you, unbelievable. She's <laughs> unbelievable, care, uh, unbelievable woman. Um, so, through, uh, can you share with us how many games you guys hope to get in at all this season? If if we do move forward with a season, I know just recently they announced uh, a major sponsor with Serenet, I think it was. So, for the jerseys. yeah, for the jerseys, I think wasn't yeah. it? Sonic yeah, yeah, Sonic or something. I can't remember who it was with, but what are they hoping to get the games going forward this season at all? Yeah, I mean, obviously with our current conditions and with everything going on, it's it's hard to make a schedule. I, I know they do still want to do a, a tour, and because they would like to get some more some more exposure. And um, but we'll see what see what happens based on our restrictions. But they're hoping they're hoping to make something happen this year. Well, from one hockey dad to a young lady, I would love to see you guys back on the ice. I think it's, uh, I think it's a great game. Uh, I found my daughter's played. Uh, she's 16, played throughout her career, half boys, half girls, 
And I must say the, the girls game is definitely much faster and so much more exciting to watch because you girls chirp a lot more on the ice than the boys. <laughs> Which leads me to this next question. If you can, can you share with us the best chirp you ever gave another player? <laughs> I, uh, I'll admit chirping is not my strong suit. I Usually if somebody's chirping at me, I'll just give them a smile and they just seem to, <laughs> to get even more mad. So, so I would just say that my smile is probably my only defense. <laughs> so they're chirping at you and you go, <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah yeah uh, so for all you young ladies out there if someone's chirping at you do one of these <laughs> uh, can you tell us uh the best penalty you ever took Ooh, <laughs> the best penalty or the worst penalty uh, 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 whichever <laughs> penalty you want to share with us your uh, face is going red so and looking at your stats you have over 52 penalty minutes so you must have a good one well, I hope Howie doesn't watch this one, but I'd say uh, we were playing, I can't remember, it might have been Lethbridge or something like that, and they pull, the whistle play was done, and I was outside of the blue line, <laughs> and one of my line mates, Kennedy Ganser, got uh, knocked over, so I skated in from the blue line, not so subtly. <laughs> and, yeah, I got a little involved, so Howie wasn't too happy with, with me on that one. I'll make sure I send this tape to Howie, <laughs> just for you. <laughs> Yeah, not very subtle if you skate from the blue line. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, throughout your whole career, what would you say was the biggest highlight that you faced? Highlight that I faced? Um, well, obviously, during Pandas, I would say that uh, Nationals was was pretty amazing. That but, like, We went in kind of as the underdogs, and... It, Nationals is a pretty intense uh, schedule. Basically, you lose one and you're done. So mm -hmm. it, uh, that was pretty incredible winning that. And what would you say was one of your worst memories that you have of playing hockey throughout your entire career so far? Um, I I would say probably I think my first year Pandas, just because uh, I we uh, ended up getting knocked out in semis that year. And I just, I felt like, you know, pandas have a very strong history of, of winning and everything. So as a, as a first year, kind of like, oh, well, could I have done something more? Like, I felt like I took a lot of that pressure. And I, I don't know that I had to, but I just, I, that's what you do when you're younger and <laughs> you yeah. lose. I would say that was probably one of the worst, but it definitely made us better the next year we came back. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to ask, how have you evolved as a young woman dealing with the stresses of winning and losing like the the stress of the loss but then there's still that mental aspect of even winning could have i done better or what could have i have done to increase the score how how can you um, how have you been able to interpret that and be able to work with that mentally as a player yeah well one thing i would say and i think my mom had a lot to do with this actually is because when when she was coaching me she always preached well if as long as you can, all you can do is control how hard you work and so some sometimes games don't go your way it's that's why it's a game right and and it, it's it's exciting but uh, the only thing you can control is if, if you work hard and i think that was one of the things i just had to keep reminding myself i'm like hey i left it all out there i couldn't i couldn't change anything i w were you positive i always wanted to make sure too that i was positive on the bench because in a, a game where you lose it's easy to get uh, kind of sucked down that vortex so being able to stay positive, help, help your teammates out. I think I, I really grew my skill, leadership skills in that sense from my first year to my fifth year. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I want to hit on is before you joined uh, the Pandas, back in 2014, you played on the ESO Cup. You scored 10 points in seven games and you helped win the silver medal. How exciting was that for you playing in the ESO Cup? Oh, the ESO Cup, that was amazing. Yeah, I, I, every year you'd go and you'd see the ice with all the stickers on it, and it, it, you felt like you were in the NHL, basically. it was uh, The ESO Cup was, was amazing, and I, uh, I really enjoyed playing there, and I liked the atmosphere, and I really build off the energy, and it's fun when you have a whole bunch of fans. So I, uh, I was excited to play in the ESO Cup. Obviously, nobody likes to <laughs> lose, I guess, the gold medal, but mm -hmm. silver medal is not too bad, too. Hey, it's still a medal. <laughs> yeah it could have been bronze bronze is not a metal remember <laughs> that anyhow um gotta have another quick commercial break here somebody's got to pay the bills we'll be right back with some more questions for alex
Welcome back, viewers. Uh, we have Alex here, who is now currently playing with the PW. P, well, the PW. We'll give it its abbreviation, the PW. Um, Alex, growing up, uh, you mentioned that your mom was your coach. Um, going, can you um, talk to our viewers about uh, the differences um, between the coaches you've had throughout the years? Because um, I, I think it's important that everyone gets the um, uh, like. There's some coaches that are hard on you, but they're hard on you without screaming and yelling in your face. And then there's coaches that are um, they'll come up to you at practice tap you with their stick and go, hey, come on, let's pick it up a little bit. Can you tell our, our girls out there that are watching the show um, the type of coaches you had, how you related to them, how you how you worked with them to get better? Yeah. I, I guess my main question is, is did you have a bad coach that screamed and yelled at you or was it just primarily the coach that came up and tapped you on the shoulder and went, hey, come on. Let's pick it up a little bit. Like Howie, for example, I know would not scream at you. He would bring you to the side and go, listen, you did this wrong. Let's work with this. And he's a high competitive player. Uh, he played too, and he's now a high competitive coach. So can you tell our viewers how you worked with different coaches throughout your career and the type of attitudes they had towards you for, I guess, accomplishing something and, and screwing up during a practice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've definitely had uh, pretty much every kind of coach you can think of. I've had, obviously, my my mom. She was very, very calm, cool, and collected, and she would she would never, ever raise her voice, and I really commended her for that. And that, just like Howie as well, um, he's, he's very good. He's very constructive with his criticism, and I've had, you know, the other end of that spectrum where you have them yelling and screaming at you every time you screw up, and in between uh, periods in the gate dressing room, they're just – just screaming and all, all you can do is I know when I first saw that I was definitely taken back and you know it's easy to get sucked in and and kind of start taking that personally which I would say like that was actually a good growing moment for me because eventually I just kind of learned to I had to brush it off because I mean I don't really I don't find you know the screaming or anything really motivates me if anything it makes you kind of want to pull back so yeah. I just learned to kind of put up a front and not kind of in one ear out the other, which you don't want as a coach, obviously, because you want you want everyone to be receiving your information and, and processing it. But the screaming, I, I was a never a big fan of. So I found I just kind of learned how to deal with that and make sure you don't take it personally. Um, throughout your playing career, did you ever have that coach that would throw the clipboard at you? I'm not saying that your mom ever did that. But did you ever have that? Did you ever have that coach? And and if so, how did you deal with that type of of coach? Yeah, it was more so in midget when I definitely it was different because it was the I guess midget triple A, so you're elite at that age, I guess. But so they they treated it very <laughs> like it was kind of that this was everything in the world and the most important thing in the world, and so you kind of lost perspective when they're screaming at you and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Yeah, I've screwed up everything, but I mean, you, we have to remember that during that process, I just remember like, this is a game. I don't want anyone to kind of take this passion away from me. So that's, that was just me learning how to, how to deal with a coach who throws clipboards at the wall and, and screens. So. Coaches don't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> um, back in 2017, you played uh, with the winter universe, universe something. Team Canada, yeah. and you guys again won the silver medal that year. Um, when you played in that tournament, how was your thought process in building the team that you that you played with? Um, that coach, I believe, that year was Daniel Gallette, I believe, was it not? Uh, for Kazakhstan, I think so. Yeah, I actually had, I was lucky enough to have Howie on the bench too when I was there. Oh, Howie was on that? Yeah, he was on the bench too. He was uh, the assistant coach, but that that was an incredible group of girls that they put together for that team. It was very positive. Everyone got along really well. And so that that was a definitely once in a lifetime opportunity to go to Kazakhstan and play for team mm -hmm. for, play for Canada. So 
that was that was a pretty surreal time. What's your best memory of playing hockey from junior, uh, from minor all the way to now? What's your fondest memory? What's my fondest memory? Oh, geez. I, I do have to say Nationals is, is very uh, high up there, but I did love in midget, I, the max tournament was a was yeah. the Christmas tournament. So, and we ended up, you got to play in the Saddle Dome if you made it to finals. And so that was kind of my first exposure to, I guess it was a televised game and media. So that was pretty cool for me. And we ended up winning that tournament. So I would say that's probably one of my fondest. Well, that's awesome to hear. Um, we have another question for you. Uh, someone would like to know who was a better cook growing up, your mom or your dad? <laughs> uh, my mom. Your mom. <laughs> and they also want to know, now that you've graduated, I'm trying to read the text. Now that you've graduated, how far do you want to go in your career? Uh, kind of I didn't really ask you that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the same goal, I really want to make it to the Olympics one day and play for Team Canada. So that's that's what I'd like to do, and I'd also like to kind of be a part of this movement with the PW and you mm -hmm. know make it a sustainable league for younger girls when they're when they're done university. Sweet. We have to take one more quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up with Alex because she's got to get back to her training. So give us one sec. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We have Alex here, then we're wrapping up. Alex, I'm just reading through a article on you um, from back when you played in the ESSO Cup. You had back-to-back -back trips, um, and you were one of uh, Canada's national female midget champions from 2013 to 2015. And what I wanted to ask you is all those little girls that have the dream out there of, uh, for some girls, it's not going to be realistic, but for some girls, it happened. What would you tell the girls even if they don't make Team Canada, how they, it's not, what I'm trying to get across is it's not a big deal. You, you have to set goals for yourself. So what would you tell all the girls watching, um, uh, give them perspective on, on how, even if you didn't make it, where you would be today and how you have become um, in my mind, such a star at such a young age and being invited to play with a PW. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the <clears throat> big like, lesson out of that is in anything you do, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're putting your heart into it and you want to, you want to make sure you're working hard and, you know, you're doing it with um, positivity and, you know, with anything you want it, you want to be positive because, you're not going to be as successful at what you do if you're always beating yourself up and everything. So positive self-talk, every, everything like that. I, I mean, even if you don't achieve your goal, if I, I'm still trying to achieve my goal and I don't know if it's going to happen, but even though I don't know, it, I know it's not a guarantee, that's kind of just given me something to work towards. And I mean, in the process, even if it doesn't happen, I'm learning so much. I'm getting stronger. I'm, I'm staying active. I'm staying healthy and and i'm really i feel as if my leadership skills as well have developed which I'll, I'll carry with me through the rest of my life in anything i do so i think with those goals just remember that as long as you're, you're working hard and you're trying to develop as as maybe an athlete but also just as an individual then i think that's really important again alex thanks so much for joining us today 
uh, please stay right there. Um, everyone, we had Alex on the show today and we were very happy to have her. We wanted to give a perspective of how a young lady made it through her career and is now playing with a PW here based out of Calgary, Alberta. And dreams can come true if you keep working hard for it. Uh, we look forward to our next time with you guys. Thanks very much for joining us today. Take care, everyone. Bye.